Hi, I'm Jay Sporser from the Flight Test Forums, and today we'll be doing the Go of the Box. So let's look at the electronics we'll need. First, we're going to need a Blue Wonder equivalent motor mashed up with your ESC receiver and two 9 gram servos, but I'm just using a 7.5 because that's all I had. And then get your piece cut out, and we will have a diagram and links to all the parts. So let's get started. All right, now that you got your pieces cut out, we can start assembling the frame. Now we're just going to set this elevator rotor aside. We're going to grab one of the rectangles. And what we're going to do is that on this one, we're just going to draw a reference line right down the middle. So we're going to measure 14. Half of it is 7. Top. And then what we're going to do is we are going to draw a reference, reference line. Just take your pencil, mark a line right down the middle, and you're going to, on the second piece, we're going to cut it. So, just measure 14 again, 7, Cut it right down the middle. Alright, now that we've got that cut, we can take one of these rectangles and apply a bead of glue right down that line. You don't want to put too much because this is a pretty light frame. Just keep it pretty light. And then we're going to place this rectangle right on top of that reference line, keeping it lined up. Alright, and let that dry. Alright, now that that's dry, we can do the same process with the bottom piece. Now what I like to do is I like to draw a reference line right where the foam on the top, lines up on the bottom. Just draw a little mark. Do that on each side. And this time, instead of putting it down on the big rectangle, I'm going to put it on this because there's not much of a reference line to go by. Draw a thin little bead. Down there. And apply it to the top. Making sure that you're lined up. And what we can do actually is we can take it to the side of our building board and hold it there until it dries. Let this dry. Alright, that's dry. Now we're going to follow up with a thin bead on all four sides and squeegee it. So, let's lay a thin little bead on the side. Squeegee, squeegee that in. Alright, repeat the same process on all three sides. We'll go to the next step. Alright, now that we've done all the reinforcement beads, we can move on to our tail. So, we're going to grab our elevator and rudder. Now, as you can see, this is just pretty much a square. And what I, what I like to do is I actually like to add an angle. That makes it durable and for looks. But what we're going to do on the rudder is, I can, as you can see, the just the flat square side, and the angle is the top. So we're going to take the bottom, take a ruler, and we're going to cut a pretty good sized triangle out of it. So and then your elevator can move freely up and down. Now we're going to put a bevel on the elevator rudder, and we'll move on to our next step. Alright, now you should have the rudder and elevator beveled. Now we can tape it onto our frame. So we're just going to take a few strips of tape. Lay one down on each side of the elevator. You should have two strips on each end. We're going to take our frame. And make sure when you put the elevator on, you can see the pieces where uh, the two smaller rectangles where we joined them on top and bottom. Make sure that those are vertically aligned. 
so that when you put your elevator on, it's going horizontal with the solid piece. And now, you can take your elevator and stick it on. And repeat the same process to the rudder. Once we've got our elevator and rudder installed and make sure they're moving freely, we can move on to our motor. Now you're going to need an upthrust block. It does not matter what size. Um, what I just cut out here is roughly an inch long by oh half an inch wide. And what we're going to do, make sure your everything's upright. And what we're going to do is we're just going to apply a little bit of glue right on the bottom. Stick our upthrust block. You want it roughly about a quarter inch from uh, the horizontal piece. Alright, let this dry. Now our upthrust block is dried, we can move on to gluing our motor. Now what I like to do is, as you can see on this motor, I have four screws and a X, I guess you could say, I guess a diamond. And what I like to do is use the horizontal screws and the vertical screws to line up with the uh, plus with the frame. So we're going to line those screws up. Make sure you open the screws to the foam. And make sure you mount your motor on an FT file or a credit card. Alright, now that that fits good, we can take our hot glue down. Alright, and make sure you do not have any right or left thrusting. Let this dry. Alright, our motor is done drying, but as you can see, we've got these gaps in the back. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to squirt some glue in there, or if you'd like you can put some foam spacers, but I'm just going to go the simple route and put some glue. Put some glue in there, go to the other side, pour some more glue in there, alright, let that dry. Alright, our motor is done drying, now we can move on to our servos. Now I've already cut a whole slot right here, just to save on time, but you want your servo uh, to be placed pretty much in the middle. If you have a heavier motor on the front, you might move it back. But usually for motors like this, you want it in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my lead is facing forward. I'm just going to route that through, slot the servo, and test fit it. Lift it up. I'm going to drop the glue under each side. And then push that down. Now what I like to do is return with the squeegee. I just like to clean that up sort of. Alright, and let that dry. Alright, now we've got both of our servos installed. Now we can move on to our push rods and control forms. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to have to cut a slot in our control surface. I'm going to start with the elevator. And you just want it, your slot to be lined up with the servo arm, depending on which hole you use. So I'm going to be using the outermost hole. So I'm going to cut the slot right there. The main thing is just make sure your control arm is right over the edge line. Okay. I'm going to slot it in. Control I'm just going to lift it back up. Lay a nice little bead right there. I guess there's some beads that glue on. Alright, swap that in. 
wipe away the glue, and let that dry. Repeat the same process on the other side. All right, now that you've got your servos installed, we can move on to electronics. Now, as you can see, I've got a different box here, but the other one I took to a friend's house, and I got to fly it around there and pass the transmitter on to them, and got their opinion on how it flew, and they said it flew great. So I built a new one here so I could show you where the electronics went because the other one got pretty beat up. So I decided to retire it. But the ESC goes right up in the nose, right by the firewall. Depending on how big of an ESC you have, you might have to move it further back or whatever. But um, the battery goes pretty much at the nose. Put a little strip of Velcro going back there. And the um, battery should go pretty much at the nose. Uh, CG is about three inches from here, the leading edge, and it should roughly balance right there. And then I cut a hole in the side here so my wires can pass through to my receiver and just glue the receiver right there. And that is pretty much it. So let's go maiden it. Alright, now we're ready for a maiden. Now as you can see I have saran wrap on the outside. That's an option, you can do it. I just take the saran wrap roll wrapped around a few times. You should be good to go. Now, let me check my controls real quick. Alright, we're good to go. Now, you want to fly this plane on a calm day. Uh, it does not like the wind at all. It's a good indoor plan actually. And, uh, I think home. Uh, I think you have another But I don't. Yeah. I'll have to do some wind though. Hope you enjoyed this video and give me or subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next video.